All right, joining me once again here on The Matthew Filipovich Show is my friend Antonia Juhas. Antonia is a writer and oil policy and energy analyst. Her work has been seen in Rolling Stone, Harper's, The Nation, The Atlantic. She is the author of several books, including The Tyranny of Oil and Black Tide, all of which and more you can find at AntoniaJuhas.net. You can also follow her on Twitter at Antonia Juhas. Antonia, thank you so much for being on the show again. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure to be on with you. All right. So, Antonia, we have a lot of horrible oil things to talk about today. Um, The first where we're going to start is uh, just this week there was a spill in Santa Barbara, California. Um, You look at some of the pictures of like oil drenched pelicans. It's just heartbreaking stuff. Tell us what do we know so so far about the Santa Barbara spill? Yeah, of course, this is just uh, horrible and the pictures keep getting worse and it's very it's tragic to see these images in such a beautiful part of the country, but I guess it's always a beautiful place uh, that's devastated when there's an offshore oil spill. And I guess the most important new piece of information regarding this spill is that it does involve an offshore facility. So this is a pipeline that was carrying oil from an Exxon offshore rig. Um, and if you look at maps of where offshore oil drilling takes place, they're just these webs of underground pipelines that carry the oil from the rigs to the shore. So there's an underground pipeline that carries this oil to the shore, and then the pipeline runs along shore to a processing facility. So the pipeline ruptured on the shoreline area, and the rupture has now involved, they're estimating about 105,000 gallons um, of crude oil that has spilled from the shore into the ocean. Um, The pipeline company is a company called Plains All-American. Like many oil pipelines across the United States, uh, they're not well regulated, uh, always in non-compliance for different types of problems. Um, And this one seems to have a particularly bad record. And, you know, pipelines burst. I think the difference here is that this pipeline burst um, you know, near, near the ocean and near Mm -hmm. a very important ecological part of the ocean. And it's having definitely already, you know, looks like devastating impacts. And they're saying that it will be weeks or months until it stops. Um, and you know, until it can be contained is what the Coast Guard is reporting. Yeah, it's devastating. And it's also kind of important to remember that, like, how many different areas that, that drilling like this can, and just the whole industry is just, Dangerous in so many different areas, from from the drilling itself to the pipelines. There's so many potential areas where something can go wrong, and oftentimes does go wrong. Um, I want to get to a really amazing in-depth piece that you wrote for Harper's. Um, that that's just phenomenal. So um, we're we we're actually in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, where the where the BP disaster was, and um, what happened is you actually were able to go down in a submarine and see this essentially you get right up next to the site where a lot of the actual uh the actual rig itself is still submerged in water just tell us about your whole experience and tell us about what you found uh in the gulf yeah it was a truly amazing experience in addition to being able to write a nearly six thousand word article about it for harper's magazine um which was also you know obviously an amazing opportunity and There is one submarine, it's the first and now the last, that's available just for research, um, for a human-occupied submarine available for research. It's owned by the Navy. It's operated by Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. And I had this incredible opportunity to spend two weeks on a research vessel, the Atlantis, with an incredible team of scientists that are researching, among other things, the ongoing impacts of the oil spill. And I went down in the submarine about a mile below the ocean surface to the site of the BP uh, blowout, the closest that anyone's gotten since it happened in a human-occupied vehicle, to see what's there. And that, of course, all of which was an incredible experience in and of itself. Um, But, you know, I'd say to me that the most devastating part was um, it takes it took us two hours to get down to the bottom. And, and as you travel down, I guess what was um, surprising to me was the 
different variations of darkness, how dark, dark gets, watching mm-hmm. it just get darker and darker and darker, and then making it through the darkness, and then the lights come on on the sub, and, you know, there's nothing there. It, it's a dead zone. I mean, dead zone isn't too strong of a word, but it's a desert. It looks like a, a desert moonscape. That's what I saw. And what there is down there is a huge blanket of remnants of oil. And I say remnants because that's important. What's left is the most uh, recalcitrant part of the oil and in many ways some of the most toxic parts of the oil. It's what microbes that eat oil didn't want to eat. It's the um, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. It's one of the most toxic parts of the oil. It will remain toxic for as long as it's down there, and it's expected to stay down there for a thousand years or more. Um, and it's a blanket. And that blanket, as the oil was being released, you know, when the scientists I was on the ship would said this to me, and I just found it very profound, you know, basically all the critters that could get out of the way got out of the way, and all those mm-hmm. that couldn't were, were, in her words, nuked. Um, and this, um, means that there is, um, first of all, significantly less light than there was before the oil spill, but then the oil that is, the, the, the creatures that are coming back and there are some are coming back, but they're being exposed to the toxic oil. So they're right. carrying it up through, through, through the, through the food chain. And so it's, you know, it's, it's disturbing stuff for sure. And it's not, and again, like something we've talked about time and time again when you've been on the show, again, it's not even just the oil, which the oil is bad enough on itself. It's uh, the the dispersant is also something that that, that has just like made a a horrible situation, a devastating situation, all the more worse. Yeah, and um, you know, there's there's a lot of good good work out there um, on on the dispersants, um, and I talk about it in the article. But one of the things that I, I didn't get to talk much about in the article is that there's been science that has found that, you know, not only is the oil toxic and not only mm-hmm. is the corrective, the dispersant toxic, and the dispersant is also still down there um, for the same reason. The ocean is very cold and very dark, which makes it very much like a freezer. It's a naturally preserving environment. What gets down there stays down there. And the, what the scientists have found is that the combination of the two is actually 50 times more toxic than either alone. So we've got this toxic stew down at the bottom of the ocean. And, um, you know, one of, there, there are many concerns about that. But one of the concerns that I just didn't appreciate at all until I was in a sub at the bottom of the ocean is that there's a really important role that the little critters, you know, tube worms and um you know, some of the species that are the original species on the planet play at the bottom of the ocean and that when um, food and other particles make their way down, these little critters eat it up and mash it up and recycle it back up into the food stream where it becomes an important new food source for other species. And one of the most important species is phytoplankton. And if you mess up the cycle the phytoplankton doesn't get the nourishment that it needs or the nourishment that it gets is toxic. And phytoplankton provides 50% of the oxygen on the planet. So we're messing with some pretty important stuff by leaving a toxic blanket of weathered BP oil on the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> 